Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed your morning tea. And thank you for your undivided attention on households before. Now we're going to talk about SMEs. So what we set out to achieve there, what was our job to do, was to understand, similarly to what we did with households, we wanted to understand SMEs. First of all, we wanted to understand their businesses. We wanted to understand what are some of the priorities in their businesses. We wanted to understand how they thought about their businesses and the future of their businesses. And perhaps we firstly wanted to um, get a sense whether energy conversation comes into that, um, that sort of view of the world or whether we needed to prompt businesses on it. And you'll see that in a number of ways, there are a number of indicators that would then um, start to influence how businesses think about energy, and we'll talk about that um, in a moment. We also ask businesses to tell us about what the future looks like. In a similar vein to what we did with households, um, we said, well, what would better look like and what would facilitate your job to do, in, in, particularly in relation to energy. Similar methodology um, as we um, employed with households. It was more about one-on-one -on -one conversations with businesses. So depending on the size of the business that we talk to, often we talk to founders, general managers, maybe often head of procurement, maybe GM of some sort. So it was more a personal conversation than, than a group conversation more often than not. Sometimes they brought um, uh, their staff member that they felt like could p participate and contribute in the conversation and that was fine. <coughs> this is a list of 28 businesses that we talked to and as you can see, so we wanted to make sure that we cover a number of descriptors, a number of indicators, metro regional, we wanted to cover size, so we wanted to talk to um, smaller, small SMEs, smaller sort of medium, then larger medium companies. We wanted to have that spread to understand where are the differences. We wanted to cover different industries. Uh, we also wanted to cover energy requirements or intensity, so the size of the bill, energy bill, um, how they're using energy. We wanted to understand the importance of energy to their business based on what um, they were telling us at recruitment and, and then um, real mix. We wanted, again, we wanted to explore the ends of the world to then either find commonalities or understand where the differences are. So what we learned about Australian businesses was something um, really interesting. Perhaps, again, might not going to be news to you. You might look at it and, and, and say, well, you know, that makes complete sense. But what I really ask you to do, again, is just have a think about what are then the implications or whatever we're talking about from your expertise, from your end of the world. So businesses are saying businesses are saying they're feeling a bit stuck on change. And we'll have a look at what are some of the specific reasons about this. But at the moment, they're saying, mm, I'm not sure whether I could be changing. There seems to be a number of reasons that are making me feel a bit stuck. Energy was, for the most part, seen as um, something that businesses can action to maximise their profitability. So it was they looked at it as an expense that they should be minimising. And, and when we talked to them about a better future, a better future was cheaper, more re reliable and, and more renewable. Obviously, some of these views of the world will again depend on what business we talk about, but it's important that we've explored those ends of the world so we understand how different businesses will think about some of these things. Perhaps when you sit back, these are some of the common observations that we will then work through in detail through the presentation. We've thought we'll put them out there. This is what businesses are telling us and let's work through the detail. There is no doubt that our businesses see energy as, as their lifeblood. There, there wouldn't be anything wouldn't be happening if, uh, uh, I mean, if, if it wasn't for energy, there wouldn't be an operation there. So, um, but how they think about it will be very different, as you would appreciate, 
if you, we are talking to a smaller business and we're talking to a medium slash larger business, just think about that for a moment. So we might be speaking to a smaller business, might have two to five employees, uh, we might be talking to a general manager. All he is or she worried about at, at, at our conversation is where the next customer is coming from, where is the next marketing opportunity for them, where is the next growth opportunity, how will they survive? Smaller businesses are more um, preoccupied with my strategy, what am I going to do next, where am I going to grow my business. Energy not necessarily perhaps fits into that, that conversation. It's more about how am I going to manage what I've got tomorrow. Larger businesses have a much better structure in place that supports all sort of different decision making. Therefore, you would appreciate that energy will feature in a slightly different conversation there because they might actually have a person whose job it is to be reviewing bills, to be reviewing rates, to be negotiating rates and, um, and, and, and with that in mind that the energy would have a, a bigger portion of the conversation for larger businesses in general. When we look at the businesses that have high intensity, you, you, you would appreciate that it, it's, not, it's not complicated at all. Agriculture, manufacturing, mining usually require a lot more energy to, to sustain, to operate on a daily basis versus low intensity, it's, you know, you know uh, perhaps more closer to how household would, but on a larger scale, uh, whereas the high intensity businesses would get into energy consumption and conversation a lot more. So with that in mind, so it's size and intensity, we thought, well, let's have a look at how we could um, we like to put things on graphs and in some sort of buckets, if you like. So when we talk to 28 businesses, we thought, well, how can we make sense of what we're hearing? How can we put that on something that someone can use and understand conceptually a bit easier? So, so what we did, so, oh, pardon me, sorry, going back. So we've got one ASIC, we are looking at energy intensity and a horizontal business size. So going from low to high there and small to large here, you'd appreciate that what we're seeing there is obviously small businesses with low intensity energy, very basic requirements, closer to households. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about that because we addressed it almost before. Um, but we've got smaller businesses with high intensity, um, high energy intensity, requires different machinery and infrastructure, operates at odd hours, um, energy makes up potentially a really big part of their expenses. On the other side, we've got large with energy intensity. We're talking about large offices. It could be all sorts of different businesses out there that are using computers, kitchens, lighting, you know, all sorts of different stuff that is characterised by a large office space. And then we have large with high intensity. We're talking about mining and, you know, we're talking about, we, we spoke to someone who is a head of procurement who operated five mines in Australia and there was a big head office. So it's small, high intensity, but this is like amplified. So these are the ends of the scale. So what does it mean for you? I mean, that sort of makes complete sense and it's, it's sort of very simple, but what does it mean is how do you use it? You kind of think about it and you kind of think about what would these businesses need and how would they think about energy because how they think about energy and what makes them stuck is going to be slightly different as you would appreciate. So the small high intensity, small high intensity agriculture business, staff 10 employees, not a lot, they work from all over the place. They're operating a um, um, a, a demonstration facility using a whole heap of technology. So they need 24-7 unfailing energy supply, they're optimising energy efficiency and, and that's always a challenge. And solar has been tested with them and, and it wasn't capable of providing the load that they needed at the hours that they needed it for. So their challenge is if it's a small but really high intensity. 
and large high-intensity mining company, like I said before, so they really are looking for renewable technologies, for things that could make it sustainable. But what these lot think about most of the time is reliability. I cannot have any danger. Uh, Safety is 100%. I've got people operating 24-7. I better make sure that I'm able to supply what, whatever I need. And then you've got small, low intensity, closer to household. Um, I'm not going to talk about that. But large, low intensity thinks mostly in terms of big office space and rented space. And they're saying, I'm not sure how would I be changing anything. Even though there is recognition from them that businesses are spending so much energy, biggest spender of energy, they're saying, I really do not know how to change. Because we're in rented premises, it's really hard. Got employees, I don't really feel like they'd be listening to me. My philosophy may be different to their philosophy about how the energy is being used. So you can immediately start to see, even though the, the circles made complete sense, what really matters is us understanding then what is the role of energy and what are they thinking and what are they needing from energy in the future. And you'll see that that will make sense to you as we work through some of the other slides and you will be able to recall, ah oh, yes, that's probably related to a small business, high intensity, that's probably related to high business, high intensity. I now know what they're thinking about, I know, I, I know what the role is in their business of, of energy. But they, they, they are, when they are thinking about future, they are feeling stuck for a number of reasons. We might have even hit some of this so far. But they're saying um, it, it, some of the investment up front is really expensive. And they're saying, well, what are some of the facilitators? How can we facilitate that? And, and, and premises are restrictive, like we, we, what we said. They're typically working in, in rented premises. And for a lot of them, we even um, talked about one of them, but they're, they're feeling like their current technologies are not going to be able to provide what the, the, the fact that they need perhaps the most. We'll hear from some of them. Yeah, well, obviously, we'd love to go green. What we found is that the renewables are not viable in terms of our consumption rate, that for us to be burning uh, 3.2 megawatts every 24 hours, a solar system of that capacity with a battery bank of that capacity, a massive installation. We don't have solar power or anything like that. We're in a, we're in a commercial premises. I don't own the building and yeah, we don't have that option, unfortunately. Yeah, so it sort of makes, makes complete sense where these businesses are coming from and what are some of their, um, their pain points. But when, what are they telling us? So a couple of things in line with what consumers are saying, it's not unusual, they are talking uh, about um, energy being cheaper. They are also talking about more reliable en energy sources. You know, um, outdated technology, reliability, especially for high intensity, we talked about that. Renewable to capitalise on long-term benefits. Um, you know, there are some businesses that are interested in taking advantage of this, but they're looking for some signs, they're looking for some facilitators in that because they're suggesting that the investment up front is really high. So just in terms of specifics, so what they're telling us in this area, so lower prices, greater control, um, over energy companies charging high prices, perhaps, support through rebates and incentives, uh, consulting and support on implementing some of the cost-saving initiatives. Uh, they're talking about, in more reliable, they're talking about replacing outdated energy infrastructure, improved production, increased accessibility, and in renewable, continued investment in the development of energy technologies and energy solution that are, solutions that are tailored to commercial space, spaces. Being very specific about, it's, it's not, no news perhaps, and perhaps um, it, very in, in a similar vein, but obviously coming from a very different need to what consumers are telling us. So how could that 
be better and how could that happen? What was really interesting there with SMEs or businesses is that they're having a very similar view to households in a sense that the vision should really come from the government, should come top down. So not in a sense of control, but perhaps in a sense of facilitating some of these visions, but also specifics in terms of rebates and in terms of um, um, replacing our data technology and perhaps investments up front. I think government will play the biggest role making sure they're on top of energy companies and making sure we aren't paying too much. I think government need to drive this to a degree. They're the ones that could offer grants or rebates to businesses. They're in charge and can put pressure on providers. New South Wales and SA. And, and alike with households, businesses felt like that they, that because they're such large um, user of energy, they felt like they had a, um, a definitely a role to play and potentially more so on the larger side of businesses. As we sort of talked a little bit about before, smaller businesses have different business lives and they're worried about some of different things of how they sustain their businesses, whereas larger had more structure in place where they can start to have resources that are solely allocated to some of these conversations. So they are saying they would um, be likely to participate in terms of what energy future could look like in businesses. And, and, and they're saying that it shouldn't be ignored. This conversation needs to be started and it shouldn't be ignored. Yeah, I think there are some things that, even as, as we worked through this um, um, uh, pack, we, you could almost sense, I would hope, is very similar to what we learned in consumer world and, and, and the busy for very different reasons. And, you know, if we sort of strip everything back and look really bigger picture, they don't have a lot of time to, um, they've got other challenges they need to deal with. Um, Price seems to be a challenge in both worlds for very different reasons. You know, paying less for energy is something that's commonly shared for households and, and um, SMEs. And a vision that comes from government is also a point that was discussed by both very independently, but yet they felt like that that should come from top down. And renewable was talked about a lot, obviously in different sense, in different words, but it was top of mind and how, and the conversation around how could we make that happen, whether it's for households, you know, where we talked about being in it together, everyone is doing, there is a vision, I know what impact I'm having, or the businesses where what does it mean for my reliability, will it sustain the production that I need, will it be safe, we've got to just go through testing and testing and testing and making sure that that's a possibility. Ooh. Oh, that was my last slide, I thought I was sort of <laughs> almost fired up to talk more, but I think, I think if we um, maybe um, wrap up there and, and then if you have any questions, this is a, a, a shorter presentation, but you can see the similarities of what we heard and how we conceptualised what consumers think. Thank you. Thank you.